Okay, guys. So, uh, but we will start the next uh, presentation, which is called This Year's Village Badge. Um, my name is Michael Schlo von Benevitz, and I believe that our AV is working very well. Thanks so much to SGP and to AGS. And um, let me just get started with this. We have some interesting devices to take a look at. Uh, to begin with, we have, to begin with, I, I should turn off my stream so there's no echo. Okay, that's better. So this is the high-tech slide deck that you may have heard of with the paper and the pencil. That's how we're doing it this year. This year's Village Badge. And what we have here, we've got basically three days. We've got Friday, we've got Saturday. Let me do this. We've got Friday, we've got Saturday, and we've got Sunday. So this is where we are. And uh, I'm just explaining this because there's a little bit of organization. Some people are interested in, in beginner style, novice topics. Others are into the more advanced stuff. So we've got um, this presentation now. Later, we've got another one. It's called um, Getting Started. OK. And in this one, we're going to talk about the construction How, how it's made. Um, a lot of people have been asking about, can they make it on their own? Is it open source? Are there design archives? This type of thing. So that's what we're going to do now on Friday in this first hour. Okay, so we're going to talk about the SCM, the source code management, uh, the open source, all of the things that you can store on disk, like the design archives. And... Um, after this hour is over, we'll take a short break and we'll have another uh, presentation with me as well. Just like Rira said before, this is the Michael evening. And we will talk about getting started with the badge. So this second hour, this will be things like, uh, what is the first thing that I can do once I have it in my hands? This is the way it looks. So let me just put that on the side. And then we have on Saturday... Um, I don't have the schedule. Let me make sure I, I get this right. And Saturday, there we have it. We have on Saturday the badge clinic. And this is one full hour. During the badge clinic, we're going to get into some advanced use. We're going to do things like um, impersonation of other devices. Uh, we will do uh, examination um, of other NDEF formats. So do you get the point? We're going to do some more advanced stuff here, but this is like office hours too. So you can ask easy questions if you like. I hope you can read your write, my writing. Can you read my writing? Can everybody raise your hand that can read? Oh, you, you can't? No, you can't? Okay. Then I'll just have to write it a bit um, better. Okay, on Sunday, let me just check. We've got more things happening then. Um, and Sunday we have another badge clinic. So let's make a plan for that. And then uh, this will be um, a free mic style. We can do anything we want on Sunday. Does that sound okay with you? Hands, please. Um, so we're going to do on Friday today uh, um, a construction, a, a making of, 
and then we'll have a getting started, kind of a novice approach. Tomorrow, Saturday, is going to be a badge clinic. Sunday will be a badge clinic. And tomorrow is where we get kind of more advanced with um, uh, interesting things uh, back up and things like that. All right, so this kind of fell off to the side. Let's take a look at that. So um, this is the badge. Let's do this. It's basically a passive device. You can tell that there are no, there are no connectors on here. There are no batteries. There are no lights. Obviously, if there are no batteries and no connectors to put energy into this, right, like voltage, like current and amps, then you're not going to have uh, much possibility to run, um, for example, actuators, things that act on the environment, like uh, little fans that move air or lights that illuminate and emit photons, turn energy into photons. So it doesn't have any cable connectors, any batteries. There's no batteries inside. If you want to know how thick this is, let me just put a pen up to here. So this is kind of, you can see the approximately the thickness. There would be possibly space for a very small battery, but it doesn't have one, trust me. We're going to take it apart soon. This is Friday, so we're going to talk about the construction, and we'll take one completely apart. We will um, destruct one. No, how do you call that? Um, we will uh, disassemble. That's the word. We will disassemble one and then reassemble it again. Okay, so I don't know if the design is so artistic. The, the, the pyramid is, symbolizes with all of the various bricks. So the bricks are different topics or different uh, different things. At first, they were different NDEF pieces of information. And then there were different villages. Uh, because after all, this is shared, the work to produce this inter-village badge is shared among a variety of villages. It's kind of, We're kind of in the middle of it, the Monero village. But we have a biohacking village, a red team village, IoT village. Um, there is, and I don't want to miss anybody, but I'm saving the best for last because there is the rogues village as well. And I'm particularly happy that they have produced a game for this. Maybe we'll get to that, I think, tomorrow because I haven't figured out the game yet on my own. It really would be better if rogues village presented that. But let me just write those down. Um, so we, because after all, this slide system really is fantastically elegant. So let me just write that down. So um, these are the inter villages we have. Monero, we have biohacking. We have uh, IoT. We have red team, and we have the rogues village. Okay. All right. So that's kind of what this crazy little pyramid symbolizes. I'm sure everyone in the world could do better. I'm really no artist there. And the rogues village folks from the rogues uh, chose these very nice symbols. Um, which are kind of a magical, um, yeah, it's, it's a magical enrichment to what we're doing here. Because before they were just numbers. I'm not sure if I have an old badge somewhere. You do have to be careful. There are there are a few photographs of old badges floating around. You you look at one, you realize you like it because it has the numbers one, two, three. Well, be careful with that. The new ones they don't have numbers. They have these symbols. All right, this is important for the game as well. These symbols have meaning during the rogues game adventure, which we'll get to that a bit later. Okay, so let's move to, where's all my paper? Let's move to, um, components, oops, that's a G. Let's do components. 
Let's do that next. This is a bit unorganized. We could talk about software. We could talk about a lot of things. But we're going to talk about about the hardware components first, not the parts. You'll see that in a minute. This is more or less the most important piece. Let's see if I can go downward. That zooms in a bit. So what we saw before was this thing here. And this is indeed, and this is indeed the interior. This is the PCB. So for all those who think, okay, this thing doesn't look like an electronic device. This is like a piece of plastic, looks like a hockey puck. I think, uh, yeah, the, the Monero hardware team probably just cut it into a triangle. It's a piece of plastic. So that's not true. It does have electronic circuits. You can even see the chips if I just get the lighting right. There are some integrated circuits, some switches, some uh, traces, copper. If I turn it over, you really see that this is an electronic device because, -da, because then we have uh, a trace antenna for the radio transceiver inside. And then there's some hacking things that you can do with that as well. So that's the PCB. Okay, this is how it looks in the end. This is the finished, this is the finished piece. And this is the PCB. And what else is there? So we can go back even one more step. We can, let's see if I can remove this carefully. We can. We can't see what the PCB looks like before it's assembled. All right, so I'm not sure if this works so well, but so this is, oh, I, I know what I'm doing wrong. That's what I need to do. There we go. So this is the panel. You can see that there are, that there are four PCBs in here but they don't have any parts on them. If they did, they would look like this. See the difference? The parts are so small, in fact, that it's a bit difficult to see them. But there are some parts here, one, two, three. And then there's one, two, three switches. These are kind of very slim devices. And this is the PCB as it starts. So let's go back to there. So that's what we're doing. We're starting with a PCB. We're starting with a PCB. Um, we put the parts on the PCB, and then we end up with the um, with the assembled PCB. And from there, we're going to do a few other things, like make it look like this. See how that's missing the plastic side? This is really just a PCB sandwiched in a in a, a front overlay and a back piece of leather. As you can see, one of them is orange and one is black. So now you're probably guessing there may be other colors as well, and which is true. So from the ground up, we have the, the raw PCB, the assembled PCB. We place the, the membrane overlay is the proper name for it. And membrane overlays look like this. They come in a big sheet. And you can see that they are very thin. It's basically an adhesive. So I peel this off and place it on there. And that's what you get after that. The back is this piece of leather. You can see that I've cut these out with a laser. So the reason that the that we're putting leather on the back is because these um, badges often rub against other things. You place this back 
to back on, for example, a phone. So this is the classic, um, this is the classic uh, use case. You take a badge, you put it on the phone, and then when it smacks on the phone there, it's going to scratch your lens unless it has, you guessed it, unless it has leather on the back. So this is like this is the Harley Davidson year for Monero Village badges, right? Because we're, do, we're using leather, we're using exotic stuff like front overlays. And so every year is a bit different. And this year we have some unique uh, materials, right? The only thing that's missing is, is the plastic piece. This is the frame. This, this is made from liquid plastic, which is ultraviolet hardened. So it's hard enough. It's somewhat brittle. If I really pull hard, I can break it. But you get the idea. After you have sandwiched the PCB with a front overlay and the, the rear uh, leather, then this is what you put on here to get to complete the device. Um, it's not really so important to show how this is done properly because the do-it-yourself models do not come with a uh, plastic frame because it would be very di very difficult to put on. It's actually, they usually break. But I got it. Okay, I think I got it. Yeah, you see that? You see, so this one broke. So that's the reason we're not sending these frames out in an unassembled manner. I mean, that's an excellent, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's good or bad, but this really, um, this really proves the point. Uh, we do. We have a need for helping people learn and sending do-it-yourself models, which cost us less time, and so they're less expensive. And the reason we didn't do it with the uh, plastic uh, frame is because they're brittle enough that it's very difficult to put them on. And so when we do this in the factory, we're breaking one, we take another one, that one doesn't break, we get our orange one, a red one, the green one breaks, and so we're kind of allowed to get sloppy or to uh, make these mistakes in the factory. But if we send one frame out which with each of these sets and the poor person, wherever they get it, maybe they're on a ship in the middle of the Atlantic, can't receive post for another three months, they break their frame, then they don't have, you know, it's just not nice. So we are sending do-it-yourself do models without these plastic frames. And part of the do-it-yourself system, the approach, it's called you make your own frame. So um, you can probably order one. I mean, the open source archive uh, shows how to construct the frame, but um, we prefer that you go, you walk down the street or across the city where you live, go to a hackerspace, a maker lab, where they have uh, machines that can produce plastic um, parts. And you take the model, you download it off of the internet where we've stored all of the open source uh, design, and you uh, produce your own plastic frame. I mean, it's not that difficult. It just, it, you have to be determined and motivated. And that's how you get a plastic frame if you don't want to receive one purchased in a kit with a badge like this. Right, so I kind of got, went all the way from the start of the unassembled board to the assembled device now. Um, the intermediate steps like peeling off the adhesive uh, paper and peeling of the leather, it's not that easy, but you get the picture. If you do uh, receive a do-it-yourself or DIY badge, um, it's gonna be quite obvious where the parts go. <laughs> Right. There is a, um, a user manual, and um, but I'm hoping people aren't too confused about that. Um, so this is where we're at now. What we can do next is take a look at. Oh, I kind of missed a couple things, so we're going to backtrack just a bit, shall we? So this is kind of what the pieces of plastic looked like. This one, I got it wrong. So it's broken up here. It stopped working correctly. This is the green. And you can kind of see that it's translucent. So if you do a DIY uh, attempt and you make your own plastic um, enclosure frame, you have a wide variety of choices. You can do clear plastic. This is why the ultraviolet cured method is so nice. Um, 
anyway, so I thought that might be worth demonstrating. This is approximately 20 frames, but but the, the job stopped too early. So you can see that it's a bit messed up. And that's where the ICs come out of, tapes like this. All right, so this is for those of you who are maybe a bit curious. I can't even get close enough probably to show you these parts. They are so small. And these are integrated circuits. So in an advanced uh, badge clinic, um, I won't promise anything, but I do have a microscope. And I'm going to try to get a bit more wild and crazy with the OBS, uh, open source, uh, what is it, open broadcasting system. I'm a big dummy with video. So if I get, if I get it right, then we can look at these integrated circuits under a microscope. But this is actually what is placed in these positions. One, two, three. Okay, so that's the construction. And here are the switches. If you can see that there are some switches on there. These are dome switches. This is not very typical. These dome switches are nearly never used and you need a front overlay if you're going to. You see how that's embossed there? And it makes a it makes a, a clicking sound when you click on there. That's because it's tactile. So it's a tactile switch and it's embossed. And that's what the switches look like. They're called dome switches. Right, so, okay, I'm never gonna get those out of it. Keep this place clean is what they always say at the lab. Here's a sample of the um, liquid plastic. So I'm not even going to open this up because it stinks quite bad and it's um, photosensitive. It's the photo emulsion. So that's kind of how these badges are made. There's the, there's the, the frame. Okay, so um, once in a while, I'm just going to take a look on Discord because if you have questions in between, I'm not sure if I can do this, Discord and OBS at the same time. Does that work? Justin, does that work? Answer me. Yeah, okay, so let's see. I'm uh, starting Discord now, and I will try to uh, respond to questions because as we go, some of these things are extra interesting or extra confusing, or you made one just like that, but you have this question. So I'm going to try to maybe field a few questions as we go when we leave it towards the end and we're talking a whole hour, then um, then you may forget the question. Hmm? That would not be good. Here, check this one out. This is another frame. This is a kind of a, it's not white, but it's not clear either. What do you call that? Milk color or ice? I have no idea. Anyway, so that's kind of nice. And the, the advantage if, for all of you who maybe are um, experienced with fused, de fused deposition modeling style 3D printing, that's where you have a uh, hard plastic and you melt it into a new, a new shape. Um, the, the big advantage in my, in my opinion uh, to this uh, liquid photo, photo emulsion is that you can actually mix them. You know, you take a bottle like this and you mix it with a blue, and you mix the blue with a, what, a red, you end up with purple, <laughs> right? So I mean, that's pretty nice. And then you, you pour in some transparent, and so it makes the purple that was solid, it's translucent now. So yeah, those are some tips. If you're going to make your own frame, um, you can do that, and you can maybe, it depends on the printers. The, the SLA, the um, stereolithographic um Printers are a lot more expensive than the FDM, the Diffused Deposition Modeling printers. You can use either one. You may have to adjust the model just a bit um, if you use FDM because the technique is a bit different. So the overhangs, well, it's not important. We'll maybe get to that if there is a question and, and I'll make a drawing here on the paper. All uh, right, so what we were going to do was move to the package contents, shall we? Shall we do that? Can I find a package? 
probably not. Yes, I found one. All right. So there is a package. They're going to always be black like this. So don't send back black, black packages. It's not the Mafia. It's uh, Monero Devices. It sends you a black package in the mail just for extra hackiness. All right, so that's the only thing that's in there. So you get a pretty spiffy um, box this time. We had some problems last year um, with the... Do you remember those? We had some problems with those. On the side there, these connectors were getting bent because we didn't have proper packaging. How can I focus on that? I don't want my fingerprint in there. No, it's not focusing, guys, but you get the idea. There is a um, there is a, a metal piece on the side, and those were getting bent. I think some of us had to bend them back in shape. So we didn't have very good boxes last year, and we learned our lesson. That's kind of what this is about. We're always doing experiments, trying new things, and then about half of them work, and the other half, well, they don't. All right, so this is the box has a, a label on the side so we know what it is because there is black, there's orange, red for the red team, blue, blue team, you know, green for matrix green and biohacking, and orange for Monero. Um, so that's the back of the, the box. We have a, a great UPC code from our friends at Hack5, who is one of the premier shops as well as Cypher Market that are carrying this. Um, we decided to test and, and experiment a bit with uh, holographic uh, seals on the side. I'm not sure who's doing this. I think there are a few other uh, manufacturers of secure hardware that do this. I don't think, I mean, I'm going to keep, <laughs> we're going to keep putting holograms on there, but um, but not for security. <laughs> okay. I mean, think about it. If you can, if you have a hairdryer, you probably can get these um these holograms off quite easily. And what do you do then? You open the package, you um, manipulate the thing, right? You, you program new identifiers on there or some other sloppy thing, anything you like, real dirty stuff. Then you put the device back in the package. Uh, you're very careful with the seals that you removed. I mean, I haven't tested this too much. I was hoping that the intrusion detection team, there's an actual village I'm sorry, not team, it's a village. I was hoping that intrusion detection would be on board with the inner village, that they would be one of the whatever five or 10 villages. But inter, uh, uh, the intrusion detection village is not uh, active or participating this year. This is like a few others. Um, Sky Team, Sky Talks, I'm sorry, Sky Talks is not participating. There are a few uh, villages like that. So we got, we, we, we got unlucky with that. And we just have to wait until we get a report from them if this is good for any reason at all. The one thing that is very, very good about this, if we can get a focus, is that it is quite a attractive. Do any of you say, do any of you see the uh, symbol which is inside the holographic 3D? You probably do. You're just all raising your hands, and I can't see you. All right, so that's kind of a very, very, very cool uh, appearance, right? That's one of the reasons we will keep using these. <laughs> and maybe if we get lucky, we kind of learn how to use them, how to apply them in a manner. I mean, the truth is, if you remove this, um, it will leave a... a, a, a this, what do they call it, self-destructive um, message behind. It says void. There's not, you can't choose too many. Void is one of them. So if you peel that off, I won't demonstrate now, but if you peel it off, it is pretty easy to see that there was a seal there and now there's not any more. And if you put a new seal on, then it covers up the void marking. But if you look at it closely, there's something wrong with it. You can tell. So that's kind of, if we get far enough into uh, examining this intrusion detection holographic seal system, we may get lucky enough to make it useful for us. It probably will at least solve the very low-hanging fruit um, uh, problem where 
a person would uh, just go into the box, replace the badge with one that they have in their pocket because theirs is broken and yours is not. So this is kind of a low hanging fruit intrusion protection slash detection. We've got the shrink wrap to make it, you know, set up, put another five minutes of time for an attacker. We've got the holographic seals. And um, the only, there's not a good reason for this. I mean, we do pre program these three EPROMs with data out of the factory and they're, uh, they're random data. So we don't store them, which means it's impossible to track or obtain, you know, any organization, institute, agency, it would be impossible to capture the database of all of these uh, factory programmed um, identifiers because we don't store them. Right, it makes no sense. We're just writing random data to each one. But if there were a meaning, if we had some reason um, to ensure that they're unique or something like that, to use them for signing documents, um, you know, like a, uh, a a public address or something like that, then these um, holographic seals may help a bit. They would at least protect and defend against the low-hanging fruit attacks where without the shrink wrap, without the holographic seal, it would just be another 15 minutes faster to make that replacement and intrusion. All right, so that's just what I wanted to show. It's kind of a generic thing that we can reuse maybe for the next couple of months or a couple of years, hopefully. It's really laborious, time consuming and boring to design, make and communicate with a gift box manufacturers. So I don't wanna ever do that again. And so we're going to have quite a few runs at this generic uh, packaging, and this will be the first one. All right, um, so let's open one of these boxes up. That's how it is when we have the shrink wrap off. I'm always using this to open it up. It's a poor man's wrench, I guess. Come on, open. All right, so there we have a do-it-yourself model. I can tell because the do-it-yourself model has the black and white cheap printed on a laser printer manual, whereas the more elegant model, that's the one that comes with the colorful frame, that comes with a color, um, a color uh, manual. And so the reason I want to show this is because I personally think this manual is the nicest part of the entire package, all right? If you're excited about holographic seals and photo emulsion, <laughs> stereolithography and all that stuff, no, you got it wrong. This is definitely the nicest manual I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so the printers got it right. They put it on just the right gloss. They got the colors, very good. Um, but the main reason this thing looks beautiful is that we we got lucky and, and a very talented illustrator and graphic designer contributed the design. I don't know if I'm allowed to say who it is. Can anybody guess? <laughs> Rira, what do you think? Who is this? Really? No, that's not, yeah, that's him. All right, Rira, Rira got it right. Okay. So anyway, so this is the, the manual. We've got a quick start there. It's rather clear, it has a couple models. Their hands are on there. Um, lots of big writing. There's a bill of materials. There are a few people that participated and then it's double-sided. Yeah, I really like this. Um, there is some code there. There's just a, there's just enough, you know, this is not like a, a 60, a 50, 60 page manual. It's not stapled in the middle to make it read like a book. Um, but you get the idea. I mean, this manual is just very, very nice. I don't know why I'm, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying that my opinion is that it's very nice and that I wish, um, I wish that the illustrator and graphic designer would talk to us about it and to um, come on and explain his methods, his techniques, everything she or he does is open source. And so, I mean, the person is just wonderful. Anyway, so um, there was, uh, there's reasons which are not so interesting why we have a color uh, 
manual and a black and white one. We had to do a second one because uh, we got the idea to do a do-it-yourself model a bit late, and then we and then we wanted we didn't want to have the frame on here, which was confusing. The do-it-yourself model doesn't come with a frame. Um, that's what it comes with, but we'll get to that in a bit. And so we needed kind of a different, uh, basically a different manual. So this tells you how to put to put it together, which really only makes sense if you have a you know parts a parts kit like a do-it-yourself parts kit. All right, so this is kind of similar, but it's just uh, not as beautiful, not the printing, you know, glossy paper, not as large. Um, but you do get a manual either way, which I think is kind of important anyway. So, so that's what that's how we uh, got to the inside of this do-it-yourself kit, right? So this is the do-it-yourself, the less expensive one, the one that I actually recommend to all the hardware hackers because let me tell you after you remove all of this foam and stuff, what you end up with is the raw PCB like this. I mean, it does have assembled switches and ICs. But what I'm saying is that instead of an already placed piece of leather here, which blocks the circuits, what you end up with if you receive a do-it-yourself model is, um, is the, the the surfaces which you can solder on. You can inspect them, you can attach probes, you can put a multimeter, an oscilloscope on there, and you don't have to rip the leather off. It was a bit, it's it's a bit, um, what, uh, unfortunate, let me say, not really dis, disingenuous, but unfortunate that when you put the leather on, that's this stuff over here. When you put the leather on the back, the adhesive is so strong that it's kind of difficult to get it off. So then you have the problem, if you want a lanyard on there, are you going to drill through the leather? There's all this stuff that is more easy to, is easier to do before you assemble it. So that's the reason that you may like an, a do-it-yourself model instead of the fully assembled, um, fully luxurious, the most elegant one with the, the made-for-you color translucent SLA photo emulsion frame, all that stuff, right? And the color manual. I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to give people a choice. I think choices are good. So you can, you can, you can do what you want. Anyway, this is what comes in the do-it-yourself model. You take this out and then you receive Then you receive three components. It's quite obvious that the uh, that the assembled PCB is there. We didn't want to send these out unassembled to the do-it-yourselfers because, and it's not going to. I don't think it will focus, but because the the integrated circuits are so small that um, really difficult. Let me just show you in comparison. I do have somewhere, here they are. So I do have somewhere some standard size parts. All right. And so we can, for a quick comparison, we can show, great, I lost it. All right, here it is. So we can show the size of a normal part, the SMT surface mounted technology part. And if you look beneath them, that's where the that's where the the ICs are for the inner village badge. That's how big they are. And what that tells you is that if these PCBs, printed circuit boards, really did arrive in your mailbox as a do-it-yourself parts kit, and you had to solder these integrated circuits onto the board, you just might go crazy. I mean, you definitely would uh, abandon the project, give up, and you would not have a working badge. That's why we have uh, shipped even the do-it-yourself um, models in, in a partially assembled um, state. These switches are a bit difficult to get on there as well, and the manual pages, which would be required to explain how to do this and get it centered just right and how to understand that the circuit is not shorted or anything, would be another 10 pages. It just makes everything sloppy, difficult, unappealing, and... Yeah, we don't need that. Uh, 
Right, so now you know what components you receive in the bag when you receive a kit of parts. That's these here. This is the deconstruction or the before you build and construct your DIY model. And I think um, it's clear enough already because we've talked about it that the membrane overlay or the front cover, cover, this goes on here, right? You have to peel off the back. It's kind of like a sticker. So you peel that off, put that on there. It's gonna be all crooked, <laughs> right? I mean, I may give some tips um, later on. It's, you know, if you get it crooked, you can readjust it. It's quite easy to do that. So, and then you turn it over and that's the leather. You take the peel off of the leather, the adhesive peel, and then you put it on there. And after you do that, you end up with almost the same thing. God, this place is a mess. Would one of the village people please come over here and clean this up? because it's really difficult to give a presentation at the same time as. So I do need an assistant to come over to this table and clean up my just load of crap here. All right, so that was a joke in case you don't know, there's nobody else in this room, right? I keep saying, please raise your hands. All right, nice jokes. Okay, so um, this is the uh, pre-assembled, no, not pre-assembled, the, what do you call that? The unassembled, the not yet pre-assembled. Um, kit of parts for the do-it-yourself. And after you put the front overlay on and the back leather, then it ends up like this. You cannot choose a color for the DIY. We were just, we were just considering, okay, people can ch choose five colors for the pre-assembled, five for the do-it-yourself, then they can choose what, if they get a frame as well, you know, is it, no, we don't want more than like a half dozen choices. It just starts to get too difficult to service. Right, so once you, if you do choose a DIY, it seems that they are quite popular. Most people want these um, because, well, I don't know why, but it's more fun to put it together yourself, right? There's a few disadvantages like, well, whatever, but um, you get that, then it turns into this after you're finished um, building it yourself. You'll have to print your own 3D um, frame at the hackerspace, and then you put that on, and that completes your device. All right. If you like the idea of receiving a color manual, I mean, anybody can do that as the beauty of open source. You can even have a color manual um, for free because you can download it, right? It's just a matter of if you print it, it's not gonna be this size, pre-folded by folding machines, perfectly 90 degree angles with no bleed to the edge printing and glossy ink, right? It's just, but you don't need that anyway. What do you need? You need a file download, which um, you can find on our shop. That's where you, you, you purchase, you receive a device, but you can download the, the free of charge um, user manuals as well. The, the black and white one, the, uh, the color one, you get all that stuff. I mean, there's not a whole bunch of files to download there. What it's really meant for, the shop.monerodevices.com, it's really meant for distribution, for helping us replace this physical model where people without masks are walking next to each other and saying, hi, I want a badge. And then we say, okay, there you go. Put it in your hands, right? We have to replace that pre-pandemic model with a virtual, uh, what, distributed, nobody in the same room model. And that's why we created the shop, the factory shop called shop.monerodevices.com. That's where you can download manuals, but it's not made, it is made to um, replace the personal meeting in a room, pick up your hardware device system. What it's not made for is to replace the um, the the public repository where all of the design files, the archives, and other things are found. Like for example, the um, the the source code for the manual is there. The PDF itself, the finished um, proof and copy, is on the shop as you might expect, and the source code for this is in the repository. Um, 
yeah I'm not very well equipped organized to start opening screen scraped uh, and uh, yeah uh, websites let's let's do that tomorrow shall we um, but and we'll continue on just inspecting the components right now but there is the um, s it's called SCM I'll write that down So a couple URLs to remember, we've already covered the shop. That's for distribution, like we always do in the village physically, we are now doing online there. And then we have SCM. Then we have the SCM, which stands for source code manage mint do you like the way I did that sideways does that help you if you're uh, side to side um, can't deal it with it all right so you get the idea this is Monero devices De devices um, all right, and the SCM, the source code management system, that's where you get the raw R, the, the raw sources. What else should I call it? So you, I don't think you can receive the PDF version of the manual there, but you can receive the SVGs there, the scaled vector graphics, right? And then it's a bit difficult to construct a PDF from the scaled vector graphics because of fonts and, and things like that and uh, lines. But if you want the PDF, you get it there. All right, so where are we and how much time do we have? I'm going to just take a look, see if we're doing okay. Now, what I'm doing right now is um, going to our Discord DEF CON channel. Uh, it's the village, just like we have SCM and shop.moneroDevices.com. We have this year no room at Bally's and no room at Paris or anywhere else, Flamingo. Instead, we have a chat room, a series of chat rooms on the Discord server. So if you're just watching this online in video, you're not sure how to get involved in DEF CON in general or walk in our village if you wanna do that, then the way to do it is is with um, with the Discord server. All right, so just let me get to our room so I can try to see. God, there's a lot of channels. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of content, even though it's virtual this year, and. Um, Probably the next thing we will do is take questions and answers because we've covered all of the components that go into building a badge. And that's what we wanted to focus on this in this hour. I'm just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. There's the crypto village, the ethics village, and we're coming up soon. Ham and radio village. What's wrong with these people? Why aren't they part of the inner village? Oh, here is a hardware hacking. ICS, my goodness, IoT, lock bypass, lock picking. Here we are, okay, Monero village. All right, so I don't see any questions yet. I'm sure that you're thoroughly bored, but <laughs> um, I also don't have much more to say about the components that make up these badges. So it's time to either close early or ask for questions. And if anybody would please, right, if you have a question, um, I, actually, I actually don't know how this work works. I assume that a moderator will, how does this work? <laughs> if you're not on Discord, and you're on IRC or something, somebody translate, put it on Discord. Otherwise, we're going to finish a few minutes early. So let me see what we're doing here. 
Yeah, the general channel is no questions. So off topic channel, no questions. And the office channel for office hours, I see no questions at all. Okay, so we're going to finish early. It's the last chance to ask your question and nothing there. So please come back for the next presentation, which if I can just find it, by the way, um, you cannot download these slides, okay? You can't download them. Sorry about that. Um, because they're paper. Do you get it? All right, these slides are paper. Don't download them. All right, so um, the, next, the next presentation is by some jerk. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, that's me. So I'm giving the next presentation. It's called Getting Started with the Intervillage Badge. So what we will do there is learn how to actually use one, how to do something, um, yeah, something uh, useful with them, okay? And that's going to be the other three, uh, two days after today.